okay, folks, today's the day. Today's the day that I get to introduce you to Logic Pro X. I just hit File New, and I'm going to open an empty project. As you can see, we still have our templates opening up, but we have more details about our templates down below. I'll double click Empty Project to get started. And we're greeted with the screen. What do we want for our track? Well, let's see. I'm going to use a software instrument for now. I'll hit Create. There are so many new things in Logic Pro X, but I just want to kind of hit on the highlights and also talk a little bit about some of the things that have changed. First of all, you see that the library has popped up on the left-hand side of the screen. They've been trying to really focus on workflow, and it seemed more logical to have the library open on the left-hand side of the screen. You'll also note that there are no controls at the bottom of the screen. All of your transport controls, mode buttons, etc. are located at the top of the screen gives us more valuable real estate. I'm going to close my library and I'm going to choose RetroSynth. RetroSynth is a new synth that was included in Logic. It has four different synthesis types. We have analog, sync, table, and FM. So analog is subtractive synthesis. Sync is doing hard sync synthesis. Table does wavetable synthesis hence looking like a PPG, and FM gives us FM synthesis. It's a very cool, very easy to use synth, and I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. The layout's very simple and easy to understand. All of them have the oscillators in the upper left-hand side, filter, amp, effect, and down below we have our envelopes, LFO, and vibrato. So that's pretty cool. Another instrument that's just been included is Drumkit Designer. So this is Drumkit Designer. This is the factory default kit. I'm going to actually choose a birch kit. We have other classic kits that we can choose from as well. Classic 60s, modern maple, pawn shop, 70s. Ever want to play on plexiglass? There you go. All of these are modeled after very popular drum kits. And if we want to change out any part of the drum kit, we simply select the piece of the drum kit, change the actual kit piece on the left hand side, and adjust its settings on the right hand side. Drum Kit Designer is amazingly fast to load, very reactive, and I think that anybody who has done serious drum programming is going to really enjoy it, uh, especially with things like cymbals, which can be really hard to get right. Uh, I feel that they really did a great job on this, and the variations and all the multi-sampling on, on the drums is really pretty fantastic. Now, I'm not going to be able to play these drums as well as, say, a drummer can. So under track, I'm going to new drummer track. What's drummer? Drummer is your virtual drummer. Essentially, this drummer is aware of what's going on in your song and is going to react to what you've produced and play accordingly. The drummers all have different personalities and genres. Down in the lower left-hand side, we have rock, alternative, songwriter, and R&B. Under each of these genres, we have a number of different drummers to choose from. Each of these drummers has a specific personality and a kit that they play. The kit, of course, is built in Drum Kit Designer, so if we want to, we can always go back and customize their kit. To the right of that, we have our presets, we have our complexity and dynamics, which kit pieces to omit, or we can create variations instead of playing on the hi-hat, maybe we'll play on the toms instead. Various percussion that we can add in, claps and shakers and tambourines, fills, swing. And then under details, we have pushing and pulling the beat, ghost notes, hi-hat. Do we want the hi-hat closed or open? Now, this is a MIDI performance, but it was captured from a real live human being. And these are some great drummers who, as you can imagine, Logan's probably not his real name. 
yeah, it's probably some other kind of famous drummer. But we've got their presets on the left. We've got their complexity and dynamics. And we've got all the other details that we can add in. Let's just go ahead and hear them play. Now I'm going to change drummers. Let's check out R&B. Now, you remember how I said that these drummers are kind of aware of what's going on in your songs? Well, there's this really cool thing called an arrange track that they have now. That if I go in here and turn the arrangement on, I'm going to have my little intro going on here. And I'm going to add a verse. I'm going to make them pretty short so that I don't just completely bore you. Okay, so this arrangement, these are all different parts of the song. I've got the intro, the verse. Instead of another intro, I probably want to change that to a chorus, and then go back to the verse, and then go to the bridge. If I was to create a new drummer track, the drummer is going to automatically populate the song because they have an idea of what's going on in the arrangement according to your arrange track. So let's see how Rose does. Here's the intro of the verse to the chorus. The variations of the drummer are almost endless. It's incredible how much variation you can get. So even though this is what Rose came up with the first time, we can go in and direct her on each of these regions. And each time she plays it, she'll play it slightly differently. Drummer, when I first saw it, I, I you know, I'm a finger drummer and I like to program drums. So I'm like, what do I need drummer for? Drummer is insanely fun and it's really amazing what you can do with it. There's something in Logic called Groove Tracks, which I'll talk about in a bit, where you can actually select a track within your song, say, this is the groove of the song, and Drummer will follow it, like, right on the dot. It's pretty amazing. Okay, so that's Drummer in a nutshell. Okay, so we've checked out Drum Kit Designer, we've checked out Drummer, we checked out RetroSynth. I'm going to go to my channel strip settings, I'm choosing a channel strip setting with a pad on it, and I'm going to view something called smart controls. Smart controls are essentially a set of controls that you have assigned to a channel strip that can do one or more parameters. So in this case, I've got this smart control controlling cutoff, resonance, attack, and decay of a synth, and then threshold ratio attack and release, that's going to be assigned to the compressor. If I wanted to, I could go to any of these controls and reassign them using the inspector on the left-hand side. So in this case, instead of cutoff, maybe I want to reassign it to be ES2 router, or the LFO rate, or an envelope. And not only that, I can add a mapping and stick with my cutoff control, but add something else.
So smart controls can be a single knob controlling multiple parameters within the channel strip. And we can also go into scaling and we can decide that this is not just going to be a linear 0 to 127 or 0 to 100 when I turn this knob. It can be scaled. I can create dots on this scale and really screw it up. Which is a ton of fun. So smart controls are automatically assigned when you have automatic smart controls turned on here. But you can also create your own controls. If we go to generic black 12. Here we get something that looks very classical. When you open up a channel strip, so let's say I open up orchestral, so I'm showing deep organ. You can see that my smart controls have been, they've been assigned to this sort of wood motif. And there are a lot of different motifs under the controls. Modern synth, electric piano, acoustic drums, generic wood. These are all really cool sort of custom made smart controls that we can assign ourselves. But smart controls, the essence of them is you have one control that can control multiple things on a channel strip. And then if we want to assign an external controller, you just simply select the knob, hit learn, push your fader, Done. A very easy way to control multiple parameters on a channel strip. And getting creative with it can be really fun. All right, let's talk a little bit about track stacks. What's a track stack? I'm going to open up my library again. And... going to go to my drum kits. So these are all drum kit designer drum kits, but there's one set of drum kits that are really special. They're called producer kits. These were all processed by heavy hitters, producers and engineers in the music industry. If I go to four on the floor, it's not just going to show me a drum kit icon. It also gives me this little disclosure triangle. This is called a track stack. So essentially when you have multiple tracks in Logic and you want to kind of fold them all together into a single channel strip, you can do that here. And whenever you need to look at all of the individual channels that are being summed into this auxiliary, you just open it up. So there they all are. If I go into the mixer, and I open up the track stack, see it opens up in the mixer as well. The mixer's been completely redesigned, by the way. It's got a very nice look and feel. So there are two types of track stack. There's the standard sort of folder track stack that we've used before with folders. But then the summing track stack is really amazing because it takes any channel strip that you have, any track that you have in the arrange window. Oh, it's not the arrange window anymore. I'm sorry, it's the main window. It takes any track that you have in the main window. It groups them all together and then takes all of their outputs. As you see here, all of these outputs are going to bus one. And bus one is right here for the track stack. Okay, so bus one is essentially an auxiliary, but what's really different about it than just a standard auxiliary is that I can hit MIDI notes and it actually plays. Track stacks are incredible because, I mean, you can have that be several synthesizers if you want to with all of their dedicated auxiliaries, reverbs, and delays, and it's all packed very neatly into this one track stack. So that's another really cool thing that's been included into Logic that for people who are working in really large sessions and need to organize their drums and their vocals and their string parts and all that kind of thing, or if you're working in an orchestral piece, uh, it's a very easy way to be able to mix and use all of those different pieces together and sum them into a track stack. So that's the track stack. Logic's, the rest of Logic looks pretty similar in terms of how we use the arrange window. You'll note that all of these things have little rounded corners and things like that. Um, the automation view actually looks much better. We have an automation button, which actually turns the automation on and off for each of the tracks. And then of course we have flex, but we have something additional in flex that we've never had before. Flex pitch. 
Flex Pitch essentially allows us to tune any kind of audio. I'm going to open up a session here. All right, kind of threw us into the deep end. So you remember how you had flex time. You can turn flex time on with this little button here. Then you have flex time per track. And you had stuff like automatic, monophonic, slicing. All of these are pretty similar. But then you have flex pitch. What flex pitch does is flex pitch will actually analyze that audio and show us how off this singer happens to be. If we want to, in the main window, without even going to any special editor, I can hold shift, select across all of these notes, and pull them to perfect pitch. And that's essentially just tuned it. Now you'll see that these thin blue lines are notes, but occasionally it doesn't catch stuff. Now that's not a mistake. If I double click on this, I'm going to go to a new view that we have in Logic Pro X that we never had before. Audio track view. These are actual unvoiced parts of the vocal. The real... Breaths, T's, S's, H's. So anything that doesn't have pitch is not going to be seen by flex pitch. That's actually really handy when we're doing pitch correction. When we look in the audio track editor, we see pitch modulation happening within a note, and then we have hot zones. Pitch drift, fine tuning, pitch drift. So this is drifting out, this is drifting into the note. Gain, so we can change the gain. And, and what's really awesome about the way that they do it in flex pitch is you can actually see the waveform getting altered. Pretty awesome. Vibrato and formant. So flex pitch is pretty awesome. If we select all and then we look in the inspector here, the inspector allows us to do global changes to these notes. So we've got time quantize, we've got scale quantize, so if we wanted him to be in like Phrygian, <laughs> we could do that. Uh, we have overall pitch correction, we have overall gain correction. Okay, so that's flex pitch in a nutshell. Works really well. It's really fun. You can cut notes in half and you can move them all around. And the beautiful thing about this is compared to, say, Melodyne or Autotune, is that when you want, if you delete this region, the region is gone. <laughs> if you use Melodyne or something like that and you delete a region and you hit play, the audio file is still being held within a buffer in the plugin and you'll still hear it. It's actually pretty annoying. So Fletch, Flex Pitch built into Logic is really powerful. So that's a hit on all of the kind of major things in Logic Pro X. I'll be coming back with more videos later, but I'm really excited about this release of Logic. I think that they did a really great job. They kept Logic as Logic. It works like Logic. Everything that we've learned so far is Logic-like. Um, all the ways that all the workflow of Logic is still very much intact, but there have been a lot of changes and improvements to the interface and we're gonna to have to just keep exploring it. So there you go, a quick and dirty intro to Logic Pro X, and I hope you guys all get a chance to play with it and enjoy it as much as I have. Take care, ciao.